as the Chiefs await their divisional playoff opponent. We're going to talk some extensions, some signing this offseason, who the Chiefs should sign. Is it Chris Jones? Is it LeJarrius Steed? There's a lot of people to pay on the defensive side of the ball, and we're not even going to talk about the offense. We'll go into depth on more of that in the offseason. But speaking of the playoffs, we're going to give you an update on who the Chiefs could play and what the situations are surrounding that, including today's game, the Bills versus Steelers. How will that affect who the Chiefs play next week and in the divisional round and the times for those games? Now, if you want to stay up to date on the Chiefs and their news, their rumors, their updates, everything up and down on the Kansas City Chiefs, well, you're in the right place. So make sure you stick around by hitting that subscribe button right below us. Go down its little red button, hit that subscribe button, you'll stick around, and you'll be able to know exactly what's going on in Kansas City right here on the Chiefs Report. But without further ado, let's get the show on the road. Let's start the show right off with the defensive free agents here that we have in the 2024 offseason. There's a lot of guys on this list that are going to be guys that you want to see on the Chiefs next season. The main two that I see on there, Chris Jones and LeJarrius Sneed. Obviously, you have Mike Edwards, Drew Tranquil, Willie Game, Mike Denna, and Derek Nani. And there's a lot of questions as to who the Chiefs should keep, who the Chiefs should let go. But I know the main two that we're all going to talk about here on today's show, and really that's been the talk of the town on the Chiefs Twitter, is Chris Jones and LeJarrius Sneed. Both those guys deserve a lot of money, but who will the Chiefs pay? Well, let's first start with how much money they're going to have to do exactly that. So as of right now, they are going to have about $30 million in cap space. Now, what does that equate to? Well, we're going to kind of talk about that and go through what exactly that could mean, how much that could get you, and overall, what could happen in this season. Now, $30 million is just the estimated cap. It could reach up to $44 million. Now you ask, well, Jace, how is it $44 million? There's a lot of things going on. Well, there's a bunch of guys that you could cut through. There's guys like Marquez Valdez-Scantling. He's worth $12 million in the cap hit this upcoming offseason. You have Sky Moore. He's worth about $1.2 million in the cap hit. And then Neil Farrell Jr., who is also worth $1 million in the cap hit. Overall, there's a lot of guys here that could overall be cut. And that's where you get that number, from $30 million to $44 million. Now, again, $44 million... It seems like a lot, right? It is, but at the same time, you have to look at what exactly these defensive guys are going to cost. What exactly you're going to have to spend to keep some guys like Chris Jones, like LeJarrius Sneed, like even Mike Denner or Willie Gay. Now, we're going to get the market value on them, and I'm going to kind of go through why exactly they're at this value. Now, Chris Jones, he's been labeled as a $30 million a year guy. Right now, his market value sits about 28.2 which is a fair price. Now, do the Chiefs want to pay him that much, taking away basically all of their current cap space right now? And if they cut MVS, if they cut Sky Moore, you know, make some up to $44 million, they can also restructure some contracts. Well, in that case, maybe that would take up a little less. Still, at the same time, it's kind of hard. Mike Dana, he's been a guy who has really upped his value this year. He's played great. He's about a $17 million a year guy. Are the Chiefs going to pay him that much when he doesn't have that much success? Well, that's what he's valued at. And then LeJarrius Sneed, he was valued at about $6 million, not eight games ago. Uh, it's safe to say that's gone up. He's been the best quarterback in the National Football League, and I don't think it's been close. And then Willie Gay Jr., the linebacker free agent, he's coming up as well. $7.1 million a year. He's going to be a little more expensive than Drew Tranquil. How exactly does he fit into all this? Well, I don't know if he does. He may be the guy that has to leave. We've talked about reports of both LeJarrius Sneed and Willie Gay Jr. possibly leaving here in this offseason. So maybe those are the two guys to go. But we know the two names that Brett Feach is going to focus on. We know the two names that, honestly, I think Brett Feach focus on. And overall, the Chiefs need next year to succeed. And those two names, Chris Jones and LeJarrius Sneed. You need at least one of these guys next season. But who do you pick? Do you pick Chris Jones? Do you pick LeJarrius Sneed? I think there's a question here as to which one is more worth it. Now, we're kind of going to dive in this in a second, but I want you to pick one here. Who are you keeping? You keeping Chris Jones, and I want you to type C. If you're keeping LeJarrius Sneed, then I want you to type L. Get in the comments of this video. Let me know. I want you to chime in on this one. Let's take a look at the defensive line depth chart because that's the thing we have to look at in terms of signing Chris Jones. Now, the one guy who is on contract next year on this starting defensive line, that'd be George Karloftis, the second year out of Iowa, playing on that rookie contract. He'll be up for extension uh, lots of stuff you could go with him. Probably going to up his contract a little bit this offseason. But Chris Jones, Derek Nottie, Michael Dana, all three of them technically not on contract this upcoming year. 
Now, you do have Felix and Yuduke Uzoma, who played well in that Chargers game to finish out the regular season. But do you trust him to come in next year as a starting role and fill the spot of Dana, of Nadi, of even Chris Jones? I don't exactly know. Tershawn Wharton has been great as well. You also have Charles Omeni, who has been a stellar, stellar guy coming in here and been a really a depth role, but honestly has propelled himself to almost a starter. Now, the cornerback slot, it gets a little thinner because obviously three quarterbacks, you only have three backups. We'll have Legereus Sneed, Jalen Watson, and Trent McDuffie. The main two of those three being Sneed and McDuffie. McDuffie, just like Karloftis, still on that rookie contract. Still a guy who is going to be available for uh, extension talk this offseason, but overall, you're going to have him for a pretty cheap price. Like Oboido, the guy out of Kansas State, uh, just like FAU, been a young guy, showed promise, but overall, I don't want to put him out there. Jones, Nick Jones has been great. Uh, and then Joshua Williams, shown some really good promise, but I don't know if I'm ready to stick him in a starting role over Legeria Sneed. And I think if you look at both these depth charts and you see them from a outside perspective, from Brett Veach's perspective, I think overall, the more the, the better money spent is on Legereus Sneed. And why I say that? Because he's locked down the top receivers in the NFL. And I know Chris Jones, and we'll talk about how good he's been this season. But the way that Legereus Sneed has managed this game, has been able to overall just come in here and prove that he is a top cornerback in the NFL, and to me, maybe the top cornerback in, in the NFL, he deserves the money over Chris Jones. That's just my opinion, though. And I'm going to ask some stats to kind of talk through this, and I think I, there's a way to get both of them. We'll tell you how here in just a second. But before that, I need you to go check out prize picks at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. If you haven't started playing prize picks, now is your time because you can get a $100 deposit match by going to that link, prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS. We're going to put that in the comments and description of this video. Prize picks is a skill based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. And it's cool because it's not just football. You see my picks for the Monday night game here that is scheduled with the Bucks and the Eagles. You got the more on Rashad White, the more on DeAndre Swift, and the more on Baker Mayfield on the Demon there, which means extra value. That's going to be a big winner right there, I'm telling you. Go put that in for yourself. You're going to make some money tonight. Now, I'm telling you, I just said it's not just NFL. They got NBA. They got MLB starting to come out here with season projections. They got NHL, college basketball. Everything you could want or ask for, Prize Picks has. And you can go put in these exact picks right here for tonight's game for yourself right now if by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS for that first deposit match of up to $100. And Prize Picks also offers a reboot policy so that if one of those guys gets injured in the first half and then does not return in the second, that player is then rebooted. And Prize Picks, well, they're the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Once again, go check it out at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. That'll be in the comments and the description of this video. Legereus Steed in coverage this year? Well, he's been absolutely exceptional. A.J. Brown, top receiver in the NFL, one reception, eight yards. D.J. Moore, top receiver in the NFL, three receptions, 41 yards. Stephon Diggs, had a little bit down here, still a top receiver in the NFL, four receptions, 24 yards. Justin Jefferson, three receptions, 28 yards. This guy has been shutting down every single guy he has talked about. And this isn't even Tyree Kill, who he faced twice. He allowed just one catch. Not just to Tyree Kill, though, to Jalen Waddle. Not a single catch for Jalen Waddle when Snee was in coverage. And if you want to look at McDuffie and Snee together, guess what? The two games that Tyree Kill played against the Kansas City Chiefs. First game, he had eight receptions for 63 yards. This past Saturday's game, five receptions for 62 yards. 53 of those yards came on one catch. So he had four receptions for nine yards past that. And this is exactly why Legereus Sneed is the best cornerback in the league. And I want to go even further to say that Legereus Sneed and Trent McDuffie are the two best quarterbacks together, cornerback duo in the NFL. And what's funny is, guess where the Trent McDuffie pick came from? Oh, that's right. That's the pick that we got for trading Tyreek Hill. And now Trent McDuffie has put nightmares in the mind of Tyreek Hill. I love this combo, and I love Legereus Sneed. You got to keep him around. I think you have to pay the man, especially when he is the best cornerback in the NFL this year, and he got snubbed from both the Pro Bowl and All-Pro. Deron Bland, not my Pro Bowl cornerback at all. Chris Jones, on the other hand, he's also really good. It's hard to pick between these two. You know, 30 tackles, 13 of those being a tackle for loss, 10 and a half sacks. The thing Chris Jones also has, he also has Carl Loftus, 47 tackles, 7 
tackles for loss. And then the same right there, 10 and a half sacks. And the thing that I think maybe edges Legereus Need is not even the play of the bad play of Chris Jones or the, the better play of Legereus Need. It's the fact that Charles Omenahue, who only played 11 games this season because of his six game suspension, had 28 tackles, which is just two less than Charles than Chris Jones. He had five tackles for loss, which is still a decent amount less than Chris Jones, but still was right there. He had seven sacks and six less games than Chris Jones. I love Chris Jones. I think he is an amazing player. I think he is an awesome fit with the Kansas City Chiefs. But it's hard for me to sit here and say that I think he deserves $30 million a year when this defense has been amazing and you have to spend money on other places. It's going to be one of those things of, I don't think it comes down to, do you like Chris Jones more or do you like LeJaria Steed more? It's, who do you like behind them more? Is it Trent McDuffie that you're going to trust as your, you know, your, your top cornerback? Are you going to trust uh, Jalen Watson? Or are you going to say that I think that Charles O'Menehue and George Karloftis can control the defensive line instead of Chris Jones? Unfortunately, I think that's what it comes down to. It's not going to be about whether Chris Jones is more important or LeJaria Steed is more important. It's about how exactly behind them do they fit in and are their monetary value worth paying them for this upcoming season? We'll have to see. There is one thing I am certain of, and that's the Chiefs having one of the best defenses in the NFL, and honestly, maybe the best defense in the NFL this season. And if you agree with me and you think Kansas City is the best defense in the National Football League, then get down in the comment section, type me a KC, because I'm telling you, this defense has been absolutely insane, and if, it's, if the saying's true, defense wins championships, then guess what? Chiefs got a real good shot to do that again this upcoming playoffs right now heading into the divisional round. Speaking of the divisional round, I know you're questioning, well, Jace, who could the Chiefs play? And I know you maybe watched yesterday's video. There's a couple different scenarios. So obviously, you have the Bills playing the Steelers. Uh, you could be watching it right now, to be honest, but today is when we're filming it right for that game. And there's two ways that this game could go. Obviously, the first one being the Bills winning. If the Bills do win, then Kansas City would travel to Orchard Park and play the Buffalo Bills on Sunday night football uh, in the second matchup of the year with the Buffalo Bills. It'd probably be a cold game, and that's where the Chiefs would have to go win in Orchard Park. They've done it at Arrowhead multiple times against Josh Allen, but then Josh Allen now gets the home field advantage. Could they do it again? We'll have to see if that even is, a half, if that even is an option. If the Steelers win, then you get another home game. The Chiefs will take on the Houston Texans in Arrowhead Stadium on Saturday afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Central Time. So those are the time-wise. Bills win, the Chiefs will play Sunday night against the Bills. And then if the Steelers win, Chiefs will play at home in Arrowhead on Saturday afternoon at 3.30 against the Houston Texans. Now, obviously, I think I might know the answer to this, but who would you rather play in the divisional round, given these two options? Would you rather play the Buffalo Bills well, then I want you to type B. If you'd rather play the Houston Texans, then I want you to type T. I think I know the answer to this just because of the way the season has gone. But overall, these both, both these teams are hot, so I'm kind of intrigued. Who would you rather play in the divisional round? B for Bills, T for Texans. Either way, we're going to have a preview coming up later today on whoever the Chiefs will play. So make sure you're subscribed and sticking around for that because we're going to have that out pretty much as soon as the Bills and the Steelers game is up. We're going to be in the studio crafting this thing up, putting it out for you ASAP. So hit that subscribe button and we'll keep you covered all week long with injury news. Everything you need to know headed into the divisional round of the 2024 NFL playoffs. We appreciate you as always. If you made it to the end of the video, give yourself a pat on the back and type real one in the comments. Peace out, Chiefs Kingdom. Thank you.